Hey everyone, Aloha, Kambi Kekani here. Um, today we are going to be tackling a, an issue that I've been putting off for a long time. Um, I've got some dual Weber 34 ICT carbs on my 1800 uh, pancake engine and my 1974 Volkswagen bus and I'm getting a little bit or sometimes a lot of gas flowing uh, into my crankcase. Um, so there's something going on with how the fuel is getting shut off. Um, so I've got a couple of ideas of how I'd like to address this or troubleshoot. Um, so we're going to start with uh, looking at um, taking apart, partially disassembling the carbs uh, and checking out uh, what's going on in there. So let's get started. Right now, um, as a stopgap, I have a temporary uh, inline um, fuel shutoff. Uh, in, in um, installed and uh, basically what I have to do is every time I shut off the engine I have to turn remember to turn that off otherwise I do get fuel seeping into the crankcase uh, which as you know is definitely not a good thing I did happen to order a rebuild kit for these carbs um, I am going to see if I can just take the top part of the carburetor off um, I'll have to uh, uninstall the linkage. Uh, I want to leave the majority, of the bottom portion of the carbs uh, connected to the engine and just get into the top part. I do want to replace um, this, uh, I guess, um, the needle valve, um, I think it's called. I want to replace that. I want to replace the gasket. Uh, and then I also want to check the, um, the clearance um, that the uh, float has uh, just to make sure that's uh, adjusted correctly. So after a little bit of discussion with my neighbor who knows a lot more about carbureted engines than I do, um, he suggested pulling both carbs out as a unit, bringing it over to the workbench and working on it that way rather than kind of taking off piece by piece while it's in the engine compartment. Um, so I like the idea of that. Uh, just a couple of things to disconnect and I'm gonna see if that'll work. So let's take a look at how this is gonna go. I've taken the air cleaner off and kind of set that to the side uh, and there's two bolts on this guy along with the incoming gas line and a vacuum line and then the car over here on the left side of the engine, um, two bolts, um, incoming gas, a vacuum line to disconnect and I'm definitely going to um, take the accelerator cable off um, and anything else that I can find that's holding me up here. I'm gonna try and pull this out as a unit. Here's the right side carburetor. As you can see, I've tucked um, paper towel in there to keep anything from falling in there. As soon as I get the carb out, I'll tuck uh, another clean paper towel inside the manifold. I do not want anything to drop down there, and neither do you. Uh, you got major problems if you do. Uh, talking about engine teardown. Uh, to get a, a bolt or a nut or a washer out or something. So uh, be careful with that. Now I'm on to, I've pulled the vacuum line off, um, the gas line, and then I just have the two 12 millimeter uh, nuts to take off and I'll do the same to the other side. Taking them out was not that difficult and I'm glad I was able to do that without removing the linkage. I'm going to see if I can take them apart um, one side at a time and go through the process of uh, replacing the needle valve uh, and the seat and checking the clearance on the float bowl um, and then putting that side back together and then uh, addressing the other side. I also am going to bench test it to see if I can determine which one is leaking um, and I'll do that before I start any work. Now I'm ready for test. I've got a little lid down here to catch any gas that runs out and my little funnel too. Try it out. I have this set up on the bench. Um, I'm going to test the, uh, the carburetor uh, to see if it is indeed leaking at this point. Uh, I haven't opened it up or anything. I've got a little funnel um, attached to the the um, gas inlet um, and I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. I've got a, a little yogurt container top underneath here to catch any gas that may come through um, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit through here 
Uh, the level's going down, so this is probably filling up, but I just wanna see if that needle valve is indeed holding the gas in the bowl like it should, um, because I feel like what's happening is on one of these carbs that's not shutting off, and it's allowing gas to drain through down into my um, manifold and into my crankcase. Um, so I'll just kind of keep an eye on this, let it sit for a little bit, and see if any gas comes out of there. So about a minute has gone by, and as you can see, um, there is gas coming out of the bottom. Uh, it's pretty wet, you can even see it dripping. Um, so I am not positive that that shouldn't be happening, but it doesn't seem like it should. So I'm gonna test the other one as well. So I've carefully removed this little arm, and I'm just laying it out of the way. And it looks like there's just four screws holding the top down, the top part of the carb. And after you remove these, just make sure you're keeping them in a safe place so you don't lose them. The other thing that kind of occurred to me when I was doing that test is that I could have been looking in through the top of the carb well, I had it hooked up to the gas because I should be able to see the gas dripping down in there. Uh, I had a piece of paper towel covering up the top just to keep any dust or anything from falling down in there. Um, but after I replace everything, I'll probably do one more test and then I'll kind of leave that open for observation. So let's see if I can, oh yeah, there we go. Carefully, see if I can remove this without, there we go. Okay, now it's time for a closer inspection. So to access this needle valve underneath there, this pin right here needs to be pushed out uh, and then that will allow the float bowl to come off. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Hmm. It's a little stubborn. It's coming though. I think it's free. This is free, and here is the needle valve underneath there. And if it's supposed to look like the other one, the other one has a little, um, maybe a urethane thing on there. This one does not have that, so I don't know if it's worn away or if this is a different model, different design, I'm not sure. Also another thing to check is to make sure this that um, little ball goes up and down, it's free. Sometimes they get stuck and that will allow the gas to flow th freely through your carb. So I've got the new uh, valve seat uh, down in there, um, a new gasket on, making sure I have the correct one. Here's the new needle valve. Now it's just a matter of uh, replacing this, putting the pin through, making sure the needle valve drops down in there uh, and, and um, uh, moves uh, back and forth as it should, and then I can reassemble the carb. I've disassembled the other side now, and I think I may at least see one of the problems. As I depress this, I do not see the little ball bearing valve uh, closing. I think this one may be stuck, which could definitely um, be part of, if not my whole problem. So I'm going to replace this one as well. Here's what it looks like close up. I don't know if I can keep this thing in focus, but this ball is not moving at all. And that's supposed to move freely. So it may be just gunked up and not closing.
So I am hopeful that this is what's going on with my uh, gas leaking problem. This is how it's supposed to move. It's supposed to just push, push down, depress, and pop right back up. All right, I've got everything put back together. Uh, hit the carbs inside and out with some um, carbon choke cleaner. I kind of cleaned everything up, uh, re-lubed uh, these hinge points here, here with some um, uh, multi-duty complex grease. Uh, same thing on the other side. All cleaned up, put back together. These guys are ready to go back on the engine. So that's our next step. I've replicated my leak test here now that I've replaced the needle valve and, um, and seat. So I've filled this up with gas, let that sit for a few minutes and I have no dripping down here, which is excellent. All right, time to reassemble or reinstall the carburetors. Here we go. Drop these down in position. I put new gaskets on the intake manifolds. Here we go. And there we go. Now I gotta hook everything back up. All right, it is moment of truth time. I've got everything put back together, double checked everything, tightened everything. And my greatest fear is that I would put it all back together and I would have messed something up with those carburetors. So we're gonna try and start it up and see what happens. Here we go, wish me luck. It starts, it's a little rough right now, but I'm hoping it's just the air uh, bubbles in there, needs to fill up with uh, gas and then hopefully it'll smooth out. But, man, that is music to my ears right here. That's it for today's video. Please click the like button if that was helpful for you. Um, if you want, leave a comment, uh, share some of your wisdom, your thoughts, your ideas. Um, I would appreciate it um, and I'll get back to you on those. Um, but I'm hopeful and optimistic that that uh, little, I mean, that took a couple hours to disassemble, maybe two or three hours and put back together. I'm really hopeful that that uh, solves the problem and I'm optimistic that it does because I had at least one stuck needle valve and it would make sense that I was dumping gas into the crankcase. Um, so anyways, that's it for today's video. Aloha, mahalo for watching. We'll see you next time. Just a quick update. Um, it's been a week and I've been monitoring uh, my crankcase oil and there is absolutely no gas in it. And whereas before, if I had forgotten to shut off my inline um, gas valve, uh, it, the crankcase would fill up with gas. So whatever I did in there, the replacement of the needle valves, um, it, uh, it fixed it, fixed my problems. So um, I'm super excited to report that. I was worried that I was gonna do all this work and it was not gonna help. Um, but um, I have fully functioning carburetors now, so super awesome. So um, anyways, that's the update. Uh, thanks again for watching. Mahalo, we'll see you next time. Aloha.